Testing one, two, three. This will be the May 2nd, 2018 City Council meeting. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of the City Council of Satellite Beach. Um, May 2nd, 2018. Please join Councilman Brimer for a moment of silence and the pledge. Everybody would rise for a moment of silence, please. And if you'd join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, we're going to, the proclamations, we're going to wait a little bit here, if that's okay with everyone, Council, until mm -hmm. the fire guys are out on a call, and uh, I'd very much like them to be here. So we'll put it off for slightly, and then uh, we'll do it. Okay, uh, moving on to citizens' comments. These are for non-agenda items. Non-agenda items, the floor is open. Hearing none, back to council. Moving on to city council comments. Dominic? I have none. Okay. What? <laughs> 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 got to write them all down. <laughs> I'm not going to get in the way of it. I'll say the same thing. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I don't either. Thank you. <laughs> city attorney's report. I have nothing. Okay, thank you. City manager's report. City manager's report. I have something. Oh, Thank let's you. sit down and relax. <laughs> I just wanted to remind everyone that May 1st is the first day of turtle nesting season, and for, please refer to the Beachcaster for information on nesting observance. Bonfire permits are now suspended until October 31st, so as not to disturb the nests. Saturday, May 5th, is Boating Safety Day at the David R. Schechter Community Center from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and this is a free community event. This will include knot tying, life vest fitting, radio use, local Indian River Lagoon geography, navigation and channel markers, and paddleboard safety. The Brevard Area Coast Guard Auxiliary is presenting a U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Safe Boating Home Port designation for Satellite Beach, which Councilman Osmer will be accepting. And this year's city's Relay for Life team raised over $10,000 for Relay for Life. So I would like to um, ask our city team members to come up to the podium for a minute. Yay. Yes. So this year we had the youngest member in the history of the city join our team. <laughs> um, no, but um, this is our team for this Relay for Life. This is the first year that we have um, not only exceeded the goal, but went really quite past it. Um, part of that has been the leadership of the team, and that was, has been Julie Finch. Um, she actually was the area leader this year and did the, um, was basically the team ringleader for the whole event at the Satellite High School this year. So because of that, we wanted to say thank you and let her know that she is our 2018 Relay for Life Julie Finch event chair, and she is a rock star. <laughs> that matters a lot to Julie, if you, guess, if you know her. So there's an inside joke there. But, um, but we wanted to let her know how proud we are of her. She makes us very, look very good as a city, and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for all your support. And if I could just add one thing, too. So Julie took over as the chair, as the lead chair for the entire event in Sally Beach, which raised over $50,000. And internally, the person who kept our team together was Diane, who's part of our fire department team, and our team raised like $10,000 just by ourselves. And there are a few other people who aren't represented here, but everyone works really well together. We really appreciate the opportunity. So thank you. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Well, some of us already knew she was a rock star, so. <laughs> and I think bingo has become a hit, so that's now a, a mainstay event now. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to also let you know that we received a thank you letter from the family of Betty and Ernie Brown, thanking the fire department for all the help and support they provided the family for nearly five years. 
We also received a thank you letter from resident Angela Thea Fields thanking Linda Harlow and the volunteers, Mike Rosas and Sally McAllister for the Stop By and Say Hi program and expressing how much it means to her to have these visits. We also received a thank you from Pastor Kendall Nickel from Kingdom Gate Worship Center expressing appreciation for the fire department that has a heart for the people of Satellite Beach. We also um, wanted to update you. We received recently a number of situations where AT&T provided phone service was either completely unavailable or only partially working. For example, at times we could dial out, but residents could not dial in. This affected multiple city offices, and due to the increasing unreliability of AT&T service, the city is returning to, the phone, returning to phone lines provided by Spectrum and Bright House. Staff will be requesting that AT&T provide a refund to the city for the days where the service was not provided. And on May 4th, Spectrum was on site to transfer the phone lines over. Um, so that update is in there for the, for the phones, and that was a service issue for now. We still have an issue with aging phone lines, it, you know, the system but we'll address that in the capital asset right. program. And so there's the new system, not the new system, Spectrum and our lines for right now. Right. Are okay. Yeah. This Friday they're changing over. This Friday. Okay. Okay. So, but our system will handle that. That's yeah. correct. Okay. Yes. Now this is, but like I said, the system is aging and we all have to replace that at a certain point in time. Okay. But the, uh, but the immediate problem of the phones being out you know, periodically will, will hopefully be solved. Okay. Um, also, I, my evaluations have been completed by council members and I received an average score of 147.4 out of a total of possible 150 points. Um, so, thank you for that. We appreciate, I appreciate that very much. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Um, I do have an action item where um, I need you to, to pick a date for the ethics training that you have to do annually. Do you plan on to do it here like you did last? That's great. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. How does August, let's start real quick. How does August, August 8th to council? Everybody look. That's, that's fine. That's far out. Yeah. At 1230. Um, I'll let you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. Okay. 1230. All right. Um, before we, is that okay? The 8th? Mm -hmm. It is an action item. So therefore, I'm going to open up for public comment on this action item under the city manager's report. Here, no public comment. Back to council. I think, I think um, just for clarification purposes, the state of Florida about five years ago yeah. requires all city officials, county officials um, to have ethics training. Um, the legislature passed that, but they didn't pass that for themselves. So we do our ethics training, but they don't. I also right. wanted to say that there is a, a, a mayor that was arrested um, recently in the newspaper, and the list of charges, um, when I was looking at them, I realized that although they were legal, illegal on the local level, they happen on the state level on a ba basically on a daily basis. <laughs> I thought that was humorous. Okay. Anything else? Um, I just want to let you know, if you do the, the August 8th meeting, we have FOP negotiations on my calendar for August 8th. Okay. Yeah. So I will not be able to go to that, but I don't need to. That's your requirement. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured we formed their knock on wood that we get until the end of the month or in September. Yeah. We oh, might yeah. get bad weather and... Right. Be out. So this, mm -hmm. I think we just get it done. At, I think it right. gives us an opportunity. If something comes along, we have to reschedule. We We're still way early right. okay. to do that. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. That's it. Okay. Moving on to agenda item eight: take action retroactively approving the replacement of recalled automatic electronic defibrillators. Thank you, Mayor. We're um, requesting your permission to go ahead and purchase seven replacement. AEDs for the city, um, and we, we basically have those on order, um, but we can obviously always cancel that, so we're retro that's why we ask for retroactively your approval, but we do need to get them ordered. Um, these will are seven physio-controlled AEDs that will cost $6,643, and the, the funding source is the ALS Trust Fund, um, and so this basically will be a replacement of all our AEDs in the city. Great. 
question. How long do, what's the lifespan until they have to replace? Is it a battery issue on it then? No, it's probably a technology issue. It's okay. It's going to be a technology issue and upgrades. Right. So, okay. Thank you. Questions? Okay. I just had one. In the uh, staff recommendation here, it says staff is recommending the purchase of Phillips brand AEDs. Is that a misprint? Because we're not buying the Phillips ones. We're buying the other ones. See it in the bottom of the paragraph under summary? First paragraph? It's a okay, that's okay. where the typo was. I was yep. We were trying to search for it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Then. So it's the physio control is the. Okay. I'll make a motion to retroacti retroactively authorize the use of the ALS trust fund money for purchases of seven replacement automatic electronic defibrillators. Second. A motion by Vice Mayor Montanaro, second by Councilman Osmer. Discussions? There are none at this time. Open up for public comment on agenda item eight. Hearing none, back to council. Any further? Hearing none, Lenore? Councilman Bruno? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Montanaro? Yes. Mayor Tino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Move on to agenda item number nine. Discuss, take action on increase in the solid waste service franchise fee. Suzanne? Uh, good evening. Uh, this item actually has two different components. Uh, the first component is um, a recommendation to increase per the solid waste franchise agreement to increase our franchise fee from the existing 10% to 15% and the uh, impact of that along with the annual rate adjustment that waste management does anyway in June is actually reflected in the chart below. So you can see the residential monthly uh, rate, for example, with the waste management cost of living adjustment plus the 15% uh, franchise fee will take the rate um, from $15, excuse me, from $14.53 to $15.78. So the, the, uh, the bold column on the right is the, the new rate. And those are some of the examples. And then the other component of this, um, oh, and um, I should also say that the, the increase of the franchise fee brings in an additional $50,000 in revenue for the city. And uh, that's just one of the recommendations that we've we've been looking at for um, overcoming a couple of items that we've been talking about at multiple council meetings, which is rebuilding, uh, increasing revenues to rebuild reserves because of the depletion of the hurricane, and also to um, be able to have additional funds for um, dealing with infrastructure issues. So while this 50,000 additional revenue, if it's approved, wouldn't necessarily go into reserves, it's just another piece of the, the puzzle to help us uh, overcome those issues. And the other uh, component of this item is we've had some special requests that have come through the fire department, through um, our community paramedic program for even smaller um, uh, carts than what we currently allow in our contract. So you'll see that this, we've talked to waste management, they've approved on a case-by-case -case basis allowing people to request a drop down to 35 gallon carts, um, which is not part of the contract, but we would agree to a memorandum of agreement on that with your approval as well. Thank you. Council questions? Mm -hmm. Don, any questions? Okay. No, at, this point. Okay. at this time, open it up agenda item nine for public comment. Here another back to council. Is there I mean is there a, a big deal from waste management's point of view for dropping down to a thirty five? I mean is that a problem for them or is it a problem for the trucks or is it it's it, it's not a problem for them. Um, it would only be a cost factor if we had a lot of additional 35 yeah. gallon carts. Um, <clears throat> they just have to deliver it out. And yeah. And okay. And but I mean, operationally, there's no. Yeah, they already have them. If we were going to have like a mass, you know, exodus right. to the 35 gallon, then they might talk about changing our rates because they have to buy more carts. Right. But not right now. We don't project a big change. You know. And we're going to put this into the general fund is where we're yeah. targeting this at this time. So you'll recall at the last, um, when we had the budget workshop, um, we have a reserve issue that we need to address, things like that. So we're trying to find additional revenue sources to address those funding gaps that we have currently. Are we, are we consistent with our rate structure as far as other municipalities? I know. 
I know we get exemplary service here in satellite people. And we don't have any problems with all of the waste management service with us. Um, I think they do a great job for, you know, for our residents. Um, if we're in the ballpark figures with, you know, where we're going, I'm, I'm all for it. We were able to lower our rates with the last negotiation, which is pretty, pretty good to be able to do that. Um, so on the beach side, I would say we're definitely the lower. Um, it's just that beach side co services cost more because they have to drive over the bridge. There's not a lot more. There's not a lot of commercial services here. That's where they make most of their money is with commercial businesses. So you'll see better rates on the countywide contract or with the city of Melbourne and things like that because they have those. Um, that offsets know, the have residential. The, they have the commercial that offsets the residential. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine. Any further? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, increase of the solid waste franchise fee from 10% to 15%. And we want to do these separate. We can all be in one, I think. Mm -hmm. And authorize the city manager to sign a memorandum for understanding the waste management. <clears throat> Florida to allow for city manager approved special request for residential customers to change to 35 gallon carts. Thank you. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Osmer, second by Councilman Brimer. Further discussion from Council? Hearing none, Lenore. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Eric Yes, motion passes. Moving on to agenda item 10, discuss, take action on ordinance 1161. Jim? Ordinance number 1161, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending the pension plan for police officers and firefighters of the City of Satellite Beach, amending section 46-60 contributions, adding a new section 46-68 share plan, providing for severability clause, providing effective date, and providing for codifications, the first reading of ordinance number 1161. Thank you. Sam. Thank you. Um, so previously, the uh, state of Florida advised us that there was um, <clears throat> accumulated unused extra chapter 175, 185 dollars available at the state level that could be used toward um, pensions in this case. And we negotiated with the police and firefighters and the result of those negotiations was that those dollars would be used to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, create a, um, a share plan essentially that the, uh, the, the pension board, the pension members could benefit from separate from their normal pension. So essentially what needed to be done was an ordinance was created to identify how exactly the members would be eligible, you know, how many years of service it would take for them to be able to access the dollars. The sum of the, um, the share plan ordinance essentially indicates that only active members who were employed on October 1st, 2015 will be eligible to share in a distribution of that amount. Um, and eligible members receive one year of credited service for each full year they're actually employed with the city from 99, 1999 to 2015, which is the period of time these dollars had accumulated. And uh, just like the normal pension plan, it takes five years of credit to um, accredited service to actually be vested. <coughs> so to get access to the, the dollars, except in the case of disability. And um, essentially the money is already being held by the pension um, plan separately. And this ordinance will govern how that money is, is distributed to the, the pension members. And uh, it's already been approved by the pension board as well. Thank you. And this funds are, are there mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. present time. Yeah. It's just an identification. Yeah. Okay. Further questions from council? I have um, a question on page three. Um, down at the bottom of the page, C, allocation of additional premium tax revenues. Um, in number one, where it says in, this, in that sentence, any subsequent allocation of pre additional premium tax revenues shall, I think the word B is missing. Mm -hmm. So we need to insert B in there. Yep. Also, just for clarification too, um, when this share plan was put into effect, I believe um, the initial contributions went to offset the city's costs on um, wasn't that part of our negotiating agreement? So, you know, that, that share plan money was actually used as part of the city's contribution um, for the pension. So, you know, the, the, that is still a negotiated um, item when we do our 
police and fire negotiations. So um, I think, you know, from, from looking at this as the liaison to that board, they've done a great job of putting it all together and getting it all squared away. So this is good. Good. Thank you. This time open up for citizens co or comments on agenda item 10. Aaron Nunn, bring it back to council. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 1161 on the first reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Osmer, second by Councilman Brimer. Further discussion? Aaron Nunn, Lenore? Vice Mayor Monsonero? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Mark Tatum? Yes, motion passes. Thank you, staff. Moving Did on. Did we make that motion with an included change of B? B? Yes. Okay. The second was made the same way. All right. Yep. Moving on to agenda item 11, resolution 101. Jim? Resolution number 1001, a resolution of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, concerning Amendment 1 to the Florida Constitution, which adopt, if adopted, would create additional inequities in Florida's tax system by granting certain tax breaks to some taxpayers at the expense of other tax taxpayers, providing an effective date. It's a reading of resolution number 1001. Thank you. Council comments? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 1001. I have a motion by Councilman Brimer. Second. I have a second by Councilman Osmer. This time open up for public comment on this agenda item. <clears throat> Hearing none, back to council. Go ahead. No, just for the discussion. Um, Florida League of Cities basically put out this document right here. It's called an Amendment 1 Toolkit. There's a lot of information on it, but Amendment 1 is um, going to be on the ballot in 2018. And it basically says, would you vote for an additional $25,000 homestead exemption for your property? And it all sounds very good, and most people would vote for it. But the reality is, this is the state legislature looking at saying they're lowering your taxes. But in reality, they're not. And the state legislature does not derive money from ad valorem tax, which is how the cities and the counties derive their money. They get their money from sales tax. So this is just a ploy by politicians to make it look good that they're giving you something. But basically what happens is this tax break is for properties valued at between one hundred and one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. It's twelve percent of the homeowners in the state of Florida. So this isn't a tax savings. This is a tax shift. It's going to cost businesses more money. It's going to cost people who are not homesteaded more money. And in reality, it will probably cost people who are homesteaded some dollar figure. But the reality is, anytime you go to a restaurant going forward, anytime you look at going out to shop, the cost that these businesses are paying, because now their, their tax rate is going to exponentially be raised. So they're going to pass those costs along, along on to you as the consumer. Voting for Amendment 1 is not what we want to do. Um, this is really detrimental if you're a renter and your landlord's property taxes go up because of this, he's going to pass those costs on to you. So as a renter, you're going to be paying more money in rent. Um, this, is, this is a bad amendment and we need to make sure we vote no on this. And that's what this toolkit is all about, is to get information out there to the normal individual residents of our cities and let them know that this is not in their favor. Thank you. Any further? Mm -hmm. Lenore? Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Osborne? Yes. Councilman Brian? Yes. Yes, the motion passes. Moving on to agenda item 12, discuss, take action on an agreement with ESA Solar Energy. Okay. 
Um, so uh, in the audience, we actually have a couple of representatives from ESA Solar, Justin and Dave. Yes, Dave. Okay. Um, so they're here to answer any additional questions you all might have. But this is um, we're at the final step after our multiple discussions. This is the agreement that has been long awaited, I believe. Um, in the result of all the uh, discussions and, and planning and looking at prices that have obviously increased over, over the time since we started this process, um, is a result that we're going to have a, a system that is 82.36 kilowatts. Um, it will cost us $160,000. That includes the performance bond cost. The um, average um, city electric bill for City Hall is eleven dollars to $12,000 a year, and this is projected to reduce um, that cost by around $7,000. So our annual um, bill will be around four to $5,000. Um, this is a 25-year system. The payback period ultimately is going to be about 17 years um, with the, the new pricing, but we, we're still recommending going forward with this um, as part of our um, goal to achieve you know, greener energies here at City Hall. So there's a lot in the agreement. I'm happy to answer any questions you all have. And then for more technical things, I'll defer to the experts in the, in the audience. Thank you. Questions from council? Yes. So, it's a 17.7 now. I think before it was 15. 15 yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's because of the size of the system? The it's truck? because we reduced the size of the system to stay within budget. Right. Okay. Um, because the tariffs increased the cost of the system. Okay. Question concerning that. Mm -hmm. Given that we wanted to stay within budget, in order to achieve if I can make this sound, 15-year payback. Mm -hmm. How much is the increase? It would be about $15,000. Yeah, we, we looked at like 177000 or so. I think right. that's the ballpark. Well, here's my concern. At 17.7, that means we get you know, around seven years of, you know, free energy, as we'll say. Right. Um, is it worth doing a little more and getting 10 years worth of free energy or is technology going to pass us so much by in that period of time that it's not worth the difference? Hello, hello. I don't think I really need this. But, uh, my name is Justin Vandenbroek with ESA Solar Energy. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. We're really excited about this project. Um, I think really for solar at this point, we have what we would consider to be like the unit economics being a, a dollar per watt. So this system was roughly a dollar 95 per watt. If we only increase the budget by ten, fifteen thousand dollars, we're not going to see that unit economic go down to a point that would reduce the payback. So I don't anticipate seeing uh, an impact on the payback, even if we increase the, the capital budget on the system. Right. Thank you. Yep. And you please answer any other questions. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. If there sure. is from the audience, we'll call you back up. At this time, open up agenda item 12 for public comment. Hearing on back to council. I just want to thank you for uh, stepping in. Uh, Carl Moody is a good friend of mine. He put the solar on, on my place. And um, he is very confident you all are going to do a great job for us. So I'm thrilled that you all are here, and thank you for uh, stepping up. Thank you. And, and this meets all wind loads and everything of that nature. Okay. Yes. Just to <laughs> thank you. Okay. Any further? Qu um, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to authorize the city manager to sign. The agreement with ESA Solar Energy LLC, and that includes the change that we have in here to paragraph 9.2. Thank you. I have a motion by Councilman Osmer, second by Councilman Brimer. Further discussion? Hearing none. Little one? I'm sorry, who seconded? Me. Brimer. Mark. Okay. Vice Mayor Monsignor? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Jim. Yes, motion passes. We'll move on to agenda item 13, presentation of the look year 2017-18 second quarter budget report. Brittany. 
Good evening, Council, Mayor. Give this thing to warm up just a few seconds. To... We don't want to miss the PowerPoint, so make sure we get that. The easy. Do we need to switch it? Do you need to do that first? It might be good to go ahead and do the proclamations since they're, since they're here. There are, I was waiting for them to come. Yeah, yeah. and that way we'll, we can do the budget yeah, that's after, fair. if that's okay. okay. That's yeah, that's that way fine. they can get back. Wait for the eight times. Do you want to read your No. Okay. We're only going to have one presentation, Mark. You want me please, to do that? If you would, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Recognize May 20th yeah. to the 26th as Emergency Medical Service Week. And uh, we'll wait for all our guys to get to place. Yeah, here they come. Come? Dave? Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. We'd like to the council and would like to take a moment just to recognize what you guys do and what you think. So, yes, proclamation. Whereas emergency medical services known as EMS are a vital public service, and since 1984, the Sedlock Beach Fire Department has provided advanced life support medical care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or in, in or injury, and Sedlock Beach Fire Department also provides community paramedic services that provide preventive medical care and support to reduce time on one incident and improve the health of our community and whereas Satellite Beach Fire Department, EMTs and paramedics undergo thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life saving skills and the City Council of the community recognize the value and accomplishments of the Satellite Beach Fire Department EMS providers. Now therefore on behalf of Frank Catino, Mayor of the City of Satellite Beach, Bar County, Florida, he hereby proclaims May 20th through 26, 2018 as Emergency Medical Services Week. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Real quickly is that uh, one of the things you said is the 911 services that we provide. And I know that the council had addressed or had seen um, back in the March meeting with the two police officers, we had an incident at the Schechter Center. Um, this was the crew that responded. Um, the, the, of everything that we did for that woman, one of the things is that, you know, she was, she had chest compressions, she was, she was shocked. Her only complaint from the EMS side of the house was that the hospital gave her an age 10 years older than she was. She was very upset by this. So nothing <laughs> we did upset her. Um, these four guys, Jay has probably put it best. We, we talked about an award and everything else to so doing something for these guys. But Jay put it best in that he says it is more important for him to have a person who survived this type of an incident to be able to walk in and give Jay and the crew a hug and say thank you. Because no, no, nothing else we can do is no more rewarding than that. Um, these four guys did a tremendous job. The system worked. We had early CPR. We had electric, electric shot by the police department, and these guys came in and they continued that care. If we had just had the electric shock and she was okay, she was in, the, the, uh, what was her name? I can't remember her name, but she was in a, she was in a significant life-threatening circumstance. And these guys, as well as the rest of our organization, who would do a tremendous job every single day, did a wonderful job to allow that woman to come back in. Give them a hug and say thank you. So, uh, and every one of these guys is City of Solid Beach residents. I think it's also important that these are homegrown guys. So. I might add, I've been in homes where these guys have come in and they do a wonderful job. Yeah. It's a quick setup that's so just very efficient. You can see everybody move. It's like, it's like watching a, a movie go on. It just, they, everything just moves. So and they don't say anything. And if they do, they're probably giving each other a hard time. They, yes. It's a very, very well oiled machine. So <laughs> I'm proud of the guys. I really <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's one of the reasons we live in this town. I can tell you the number of people, when you tell them what we provide, 
and the job they do, uh, they're, they're, they're amazed by it. And these guys are amazing people, and it makes their town definitely a better place to live in. Yes, sir. I agree. Moving on back to agenda item 13. Brittany? Okay, the time to warm up. So you did. Go. It is. Perfect timing. <laughs> and at our desk, we have the copies of the slides. Yeah. Okay, so to give you a brief summary of the second quarter, maybe. Talk nice to it. It is on. I don't know. You just want to tap it? There you go. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. The new version of PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Always like to keep your attention. So to give you a real quick rundown with the general revenue. Now, I understand this is the second quarter, but I've done a, a year to date. So this is six months into our budget. So we're halfway through. We originally budgeted for 11.5. Currently, we are 72% of that at eight point, almost 8.3. But do keep in mind that 160 of that is from FEMA, and that's included in there. Some of the other larger ticket items that we still are to see that we haven't yet is some of the local option gas tax. 30% um, of it are about 150000 The electric franchise fees, again, 35% or another 200000 Half cent sales tax, 41%. Or 260,000, and then the program activity fees um, is right at 30%. And of course, most of that comes in over the summer, so we're already beginning to start seeing some of those registration has started. The general fund expenditures has got all of your funds the legislative, the city clerk, support services, general government, police, fire, community development, public works, recreation, and then of course our interfund transfers. The good news is they are in their below the 50%, which is where we expect them to be at this point. So currently, we, of course, we budgeted for 11.5 for the expenditures. And year-to-date, we're at 5.9. Um, so the net effect right now with the year-to-date revenues minus the year-to-date expenditures, we have a little over 2 point, almost 2.4 um, in more in revenue than we have in expenditures. So things are going well at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the community service funds are all those little funds that we have, um, the recycling fund, Samson Island, the beautification, um, the, beauti the advanced life support for the fire and the community service for the police, and then the recreation trust as well. Currently, things are kind of right on target with the money that's coming in. Uh, they haven't had a lot of expenditures out of them, so I'm happy to say that hopefully maybe we'll end up with more revenues in those funds than we anticipated for expenditures. So happy to say at this point, both, all those funds are going well. Stormwater fund. We have already received 90% of the revenue that we will see out of stormwater. Um, so we've already got 462000 of the 512 that we uh, budgeted for. Um, really the only thing that's getting ready to start to go heavy with the stormwater is the DeSoto Park that we just granted and moving forward with. Nick has been very, very busy trying to do his portion of it with all the plants. So the stormwater will begin to see more expenditures. As you can see right now, we've only done 13%. I promise you that number is going to go up with all the, the projects that we've got going on over there. Then the Community Redevelopment Agency, um, the CRA fund, we have pretty well received all the revenues that we're going to see um, for this year at 98%. Um, some of the expenditures were only about 41%, but this is the fund that's going to be, as you probably have seen, the Civic Center has started. This is the fund that's going to be funding that project. So um, very excited to see the, the constructions here. We're tearing things down and putting things new things up. So. Capital Assets Fund. So currently, we have gotten 26% of our revenues, and we have spent 76 of the expenditures. Um, we've only gotten 40% or 333,000 worth of utility taxes, 40% of the, the utility taxes for gas and propane. Um, as you can see at the bottom, some of the projects that we had that may or may not have been budgeted for, and some of them have come over budget and some of them we've had to just do. I brought this to you at the first quarter, too. This is kind of just a reminder that we are going to be getting ready to do the amendments. Um, I'm in the process of working on that now in the first meeting in June. Um, that will be put in front of you to take a look at. 
Health insurance fund is actually right on target where we have said, you know, revenues and expenditures should stay about the same. So we've got 49 percent in revenue and 48 percent in expenditures. We do have some meetings coming up with um, the Gearing Group. And so over the summer, we're going to be reviewing those health plans and structure and start figuring out how the clinic is going to impact those things for the budget next year. So, like I said, we are six months through the budget year, so we got six more months to go. So just to kind of let you know some of the things that are going on that we're working towards. We've got our Citizens Budget Committee up and fired and ready to go. And so we're all working together to try to come up with some great ideas to figure out how to figure out if we can get some new revenues or increase the current revenues we have. And um, they, it's a good group, and I think they're, they're going to come out with some really good ideas. Um, like I said, I am working on the amendments with the fiscal years, working with all the department heads and the city manager and the assistant city manager to work through all of those and figure out where we're going with the next six months with the other things that are coming up. And uh, also in the, pro the process of starting the budget for the next fiscal year. So um, got a lot of things going on. Um, looking, like I said, we're excited with the Civic Center starting and the stormwater starting. So people around the city, the citizens can see that we're actually out there and being able to see everybody. So I think... That is it. Thank you very much. Any questions? I do have one. <laughs> FEMA, where are we with getting our money? Have we received any? So we've gotten 160,000 so far. Right. That is from Matthew. In the last email that we received, we've got another 70,000 that is actually in the channels to be coming to us probably within the next couple of weeks. There's one more piece to Matthew, which is around $40,000, $44,000, but it is way up here. So it's not anywhere close to coming down the channels to us yet. And Irma, I don't think I can answer anything with that. <laughs> so basically out of approximately 600000 Between the two of them. Right. Mm -hmm. We've got 160. That is correct. So I, to me, I see in our future to this to be a, an issue. Because if, if it takes this long to get the money back, our expenses happen immediately around an event and how you know that that will deplete that reserve pretty quickly right now if you had the six hundred thousand we'd be sitting pretty nice yeah. mm -hmm. and now we're coming into hurricane season again and knock on wood that nothing happens but I'm sorry to say and don't mean to be that we had a 69 mile an hour storm and a 79 mile an hour storm you know we didn't have a class three or four hurricane hit us. Even though the hurricane was a five at one point, it sure wasn't when it got here. So if that's the damage done on that, how are we going to handle it? No. That's part of the reason why we're, our auditors recommended a separate hurricane fund and, and we're trying to build that into the budget proposal that we're, we're going to be presenting to you. Right. Okay. We're thinking about it, we promise. Well, yeah, I mean, I just look at it and go. That's all we think about. <laughs> is how you know, these events, if it's going to take that long to pay us back, right. you know, we're pretty frugal on our budgets anyway. So, I, Well, I think as, as we found out with Irma is, sure, it may take two years to get it back from Matthew, but it could be six years before we get it back from Irma. And, and if we get hit with another one, that could be ten years down the road if you get any reimbursement from that. I mean, you make a great point is, you know, yeah, the expenses are right now, but you've got to pretty much write that off as you're just going to spend the money and you know, someday there may be a windfall that actually shows up. But, you know, by that time, the city's going to be different from them. And, and to go along with that, here's another thing that keep in mind, and as we noticed from the last storm is, you remember a year or two ago, FPL came in here and hardened the system. And we had, now that they've hardened the system after last year, we had more people without power than we've ever had from a storm with a hardened system. So there's no guarantees things are going to get better in the future, no matter how many precautions are being taken. Like I said, I mean, look at all the precautions FPL took and... It certainly didn't really help much of, of anybody. I mean, you could always say it could have been worse, but we were all still pretty bad off because of that. And you're right, we're just going to have to put money away I have somewhere. I say that in 2004, my power was out for three weeks, 
And then this hurricane, both Hurricane Irma and Matthew, my power was on within two to three days. And, and I'm just the opposite. I never <laughs> lost any power in 2004 from any of the storms. I only, and this is the last year was the one that I was out for over two weeks for the first time ever since I've lived in Satellite Beach. It's payback. Yeah. I know. Well, the, the other thing that... And I'm a block away from the hardened system, though, less. <laughs> when we went up to Washington, the one thing that scared me is we can do everything perfect. And if they don't like what the project was 10 years later, they yeah. can recall the money for up to 10 years. That's true. So for a city our size, something like that happened. Right. In addition to storms. Yeah. It's strange. So thank you very much. Um, any further questions? Okay, at this time, open up for public comment on agenda item 13. Hearing none, bring it back to council. Staff, thank Great you very job. much. Great job. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 14, approve the budget calendar um, for 2018-2019. Um, take a look at the dates here. Courtney, this makes all meets all our requirements from the state, correct? In your charter. Okay. Any leadway here on any of these dates from the standpoint of storm or something like that? If something happened, would we gain an extra week on the September 19th date or anything? Are we okay where we're at here? No, you're fine here. Okay. I mean, if you have, if there's something like that, then, you know. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're, we don't, we're not compressing it down where we could press it up so we can make a difference. Okay. This is fine. Sounds great. Um, um, I talked to Courtney today when I, you know, when I had a chance, and um, the August 1st meeting um, is one of our regular council meetings. The Florida League of Cities annual conference is the 16th, 17th, and 18th. That would be the 16th is a, is a Wednesday night council meeting. And I'm not asking us to do anything now, but, you know, keep in mind that we may be looking at the possibility of that meeting being canceled because some of the things that are going on on Thursdays now are earlier in the day, and it's down in Hollywood. So oh, it's in Hollywood this year? Yes, back at that. Okay. Well, so let's, just, let's get it when we yeah. get there in August. So okay. August 15th, staff will look to see if that's possible. I mean, we have no problem canceling council meetings. <laughs> Hmm. You know, if all this comes out after we do the uh, yeah. return in her. It turned in my evaluation. Evaluations. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the dates look good to everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, motion to accept. I have a motion by Councilman Brimer, second by Councilman Osmer. At this time, open up for public comment on agenda item 14, which are our dates for our budget calendar for next year. Hearing none, bring it back to council. One more. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Councilman Osborne? Yes. Councilman Brimer? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Moving on, agenda item six, 15, excuse me, uh, city council cancellation notice. We'll have our summer break one on the 16th of May. We will not have a meeting. So our next meeting will be June 6th. Mm -hmm. Correct? I'm letting you know I'm not going to be able to make that meeting. On the June 6th? Right. Okay. Moving on to agenda item 16, which is appointments to boards. Um, the library, is our packet correct? Did that take in the letter you have there? Dorothy Gwen, it did not. Okay, so. thank you. Okay, so the library board, Dorothy Gwen, is not going to, would like to not be reappointed. Okay? I'll make a motion to um, reappoint. Marty Hens Michael Hensley to the Recreation Board with a term ending 6-1-2021 and David Vigliotti to the Sustainability Board with a term ending 6-17-2021 and Nicholas Innsborough to the Sustainability Board with a term ending 6-17-21. Thank you. There's a motion by Vice Mayor Montanero. Second, Second by Councilman Osman. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Lenore? Councilman Bryman? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanero? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Motion passes. Moving on to agenda item 17, uh, minutes, approval of minutes. Make a motion to uh, approve the 
council minutes from the April 18th meeting, um, 2018. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Montanaro, second by Councilman Osmer. Further discussion? Mayor Nunn, Lenore? Councilman Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Montanaro? Yes. Mayor Patinas? Yes. Motion passes. Any further business before the board? Um, this one, because we know Dominic is not going to be here for the June 6th, everybody else is good for the June 6th meeting? Yes. Okay. Make sure if you check yeah, with Mindy, too, just to make sure items yeah, would have uh, That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hearing no further business, meeting's adjourned. Look at that. 15 minutes.